uh, good to have you here. Uh, Kevin's off in Nashville this week, but he sent me an email this morning that his other project got canceled, so he will be back here next Monday to head up the class. All right. So thank you for coming in. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, but you know, it's like anything. The more you do it, the more comfortable you become, and you know, and you learn a little, you know, hurdles that you have to go over, and that. So, so are you comfortable now? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So, all right, we've got a bunch of videos to watch here today, so that's really great. Thank you all for bringing in things uh, for us to look at. Um, so we will get started here. So let's start with Mexican coffee. This is your first video, right? It is. Yes. All right, all right. great. So, congratulations and everything. Do you want to tell us anything about it? Certainly, certainly. But three couples uh, all went down to Port of Panasca and uh, celebrated a little birthday. And about four weeks ago, we had a video from another couple here with their Mexican coffee. And it made me think, oh, we had some Mexican coffee down there that I videoed. So I decided I'd put together a presentation. Ours ended a little differently than theirs did. So I'll let you see that at the end. <laughs> so you did get hung up or did, were you across the border for four weeks before they let you back in? Well, this was back in uh, 2017. Oh, okay. So it was still we had for 20 minutes. It wasn't any big deal. When they closed it down. Oh, oh yeah. 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 No one had to go that. So we closed a condo down there. So they were very comfortable with the community. And we were very comfortable. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
If you wrote a script, you couldn't do anything. Oh, <laughs> That's very well done. Well, oh, you job. your first video there. Yeah. If I make comments, oh, sorry. I like the way in the beginning where you had the little arrows pointing to things mm -hmm. like the lighthouse and, and that, and really kind of spiced up the travel on quite a bit. You know? mm -hmm. I like the fact that you used a map so I knew where you were at. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some of the tips that I picked up just coming here the last couple of months, you know, what people have been saying. I thought, oh, good. I'll incorporate that in. I <laughs> job. I think one of the things I saw there a little bit that might help is, did you run it through stabilization? Uh, no, no. And everything. So sometimes just with a little, cheap, a little jiggle to it and everything, if you run it through stabilization, it'll probably <clears throat> take that out. What, what editing software are you using? Adobe Premiere. Okay. Elements. Uh -huh. Is that have stabilization? Yeah. 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 You. It does have it. Just just take the one section though to do it because it wants to try and do your whole uh, thing and that's a pain yeah. in the butt. But if you do that one section first, <laughs> then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, nice shot. I think the other thing was I don't know, the, the music seemed to me pretty loud at first, but then it kind of toned down. To, was that just the person who was playing? Just the guy who was playing back then. Mm -hmm. But they were different tracks. Yeah. yeah. The, the second one was natural sound. And he did a nice job of compressing time by using that soul. So that compressed it. Mm -hmm. real well. And I, I love the ending. <laughs> that was, that was <laughs> amazing. That was amazing. Oh, your Carol was too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, table bought the Wow. Oh, man, he picked it up. Oh, so wow. I got a question for you. Did he make her another one? No. 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 We decided um, that we had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just go uh, straight to the tequila and forget the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, this is good. 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 Yeah, she's thinking. I thought that mud would have been, you know, hot with the light underneath it for a while there. It must have been special it didn't break, you know, when he was putting a flame around it. Yeah. Well, somebody said something about sugar. Yeah. What? Well, that's the reason. Did you hear that on the dialogue? Yeah, I heard something. Something about that's the reason it didn't break was sugar. Now, I don't know what that means, but I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they just needed to use pirates. 
Yeah. You need to go to fire school. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that'll be a birthday. She never forget. I just showed that to her about two weeks ago. We were visiting. Is it her? And uh, she's just really enjoying seeing the whole thing again. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's so that one got her. Oh, that's great. All right. So thank you for that. Diane, you want to tell us about Van Gogh? Yeah, well, I finally made it there. I thought I'd throw my hat in the ring, but everybody <laughs> else made a video. So. This is what I came up with. Is this the one in Tucson you went to? Yeah, Oro Valley. Valley yeah. yeah. That's like being there. Mm -hmm. being That's like being over there. What'd you think? Oh, excellent. excellent. Nice job. Did you consider because you were getting part of the floor? Yeah. And sometimes you got more than other times everything about zooming in to kind of eliminate that and just filling up the whole frame. Yeah, I did on some of them. It was hard because they had these lights. 
above that yeah. were like shining right at me. And then unless you were straight on, it, it was a little, you know, yeah. it, was, it was hard in that sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, it's not like a photo where you can do this when it's a video, you, at least in iMovie, you can't really adjust those. Yeah. Videos. I don't know about iMovie. I think you can. And and some of the others like to the other ones. Yeah. 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 There's you can skew them yeah. and everything, but but not an iMovie. Not that I'm aware of. I don't not familiar with Yeah. Surely. I actually felt like that was an important part of the experience because that's what it's like when you're there and that you had a nice mix, you know, where but having it where you can see the floor and you can see the wall and it's like because that's what you see when you go there you know yeah. so it's like yeah. you were yeah. you were sharing a real experience and um, it helps orientate you to yeah the base maybe the yeah line yeah line. anyway i i thought oh, it's fabulous your transitions were fabulous the, yeah. the, the pace was fabulous yeah the pace was really nice that was yeah. wonderful so sherry lee was it fabulous I thought it was fabulous. Oh, I just, just wanted to check. Oh. So, <laughs> there was one part there in the in the Pinusi that I thought I heard a little witch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I heard that know. too. Yeah. But that was. It's your it's your computer. I don't know. <laughs> There's yeah. more, more operator error than anything. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What uh, what brand tripod did you have? None. Ooh. Wow. Oh, yeah. Did you shoot that with it? No. It was super steady. Yeah. What did you shoot it with? A Z50. Nikon. Your Nikon. Then you get some, some ears in your hand chase. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I did use stabilization. Yeah. yeah. If that matters. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. I mean, that store that opened. You know, I just said that. That was again. <laughs> yeah. You use stabilization on the camera. Just yeah. carry the right ignore it. So, yeah. <laughs> Crapping myself up. And I'm it's like and you and your gummies. I know, but he, he, he's in me. <laughs> I've learned more about Van Gogh in the last two years than yeah. the previous 70. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, and I, from what I've read, there are some other artists they're starting to do this type of immersive videos with, or, you know, programs with. Indianapolis is our museum has a Monet, and they're getting ready for the Dali. For who? Salvador Dali. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'd be interested in that one. I went to this museum down in St. Petersburg. I see, you asked me a question earlier about where do you get ideas. So now I just got an idea. I'd like to do one, a video, with old photographers, maybe a Ansel Adams or a whatever, whatever, you know, with all of their work showing and play with it in the video. So that's kind of where you get the ideas. You see something in here and you say, oh yeah, I can, I can play with that. Well, it's been you. successful, hasn't it? I mean, they, oh, yeah. I, had to, I tried to get into the one in Phoenix and couldn't, but no. I couldn't find a place to park. <laughs> Yeah, Phoenix, it was tough. Literally, I couldn't find a place. Yeah. yeah, but the show in Phoenix, because that's the one that I went to, is t was totally different than the one that they're just in River Valley. Wow, uh, amazing! It was a great multimedia experience. Yes. Yep. Was it better or worse? Oh, you haven't been to this one. No, but I've seen you several, see it several yeah. videos. But they, you know, they they show different things here, like the trains and some of the other things. I was going to see the trains. I'm like, I didn't. They didn't show any trains up in Phoenix. Well, the, but the one here has much more in his life. There are two presentations that you can sit down and watch and listen to. So you learn way more about them than you do on the one in Phoenix. Phoenix is a multimedia experience. Yes. Not a Van Gogh history yeah. experience. And they really didn't have, I mean, apparently they have chairs here in uh, Oro Valley. They didn't have chairs yeah. or benches that you could sit in on, but pretty much everyone's just standing around. You know, Watching it in in Europe at the museum, did they have anything like this? No, no. Well, they said in two years ago. I say no, but I'm talking a bunch of years ago. <laughs> yeah. No, I I went to the Van Gogh Museum when I was in Amsterdam two years ago, and they didn't have hmm. anything like this. Hmm. They probably think that's too you know modern or too. It's probably. You know, 
They're purists. <laughs> yes, yeah, we were saying that. last last week about the people that your guy did, yeah. you know, Mortensen. Yeah, yeah, that's um, you know, I could do an experience with him. The guy had, I think we might have him for speaker series the uh, pictures next year. Okay, from she's working on it right now. Oh, good, good. Well, speaking of Morrison, let's go to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you really quick. I'm, you know, got to the point mm-hmm. where I showed it the first time. And I wasn't happy with it, and I was tired of working on it. So you know that whole story. I said, "Screw that! I'm not doing anything else." And then I listened to you guys, and I went over and I worked on it. Uh, uh, nope. And I said, "You weren't." Even after I said I wasn't going to. Everyone here thought that I was one screwing around with my computer. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> we got. <laughs> now, we this got is the one you didn't have. You didn't have last. Right. This is the one I didn't have last okay. week. Yeah. So. So we don't have to sit through this three times, right? <laughs> I was going to give you a non-verbal gesture. <laughs> don't let that slide. I can't think it's All right, let's check out Morrison. Let's just say Morrison final. Yeah, this is for show guy. I'm going to leave with you for show guy. I think it'd be a good one. Movie makers embraced special effects at the advent of their craft. They used quick cuts, fades, and overlays to produce movies that reflected imagination rather than reality. Photographers didn't embrace special effects, in fact, photography was dominated by purists who demanded that photographs were exactly as they came out of the camera. Ansel Adams and the F-64 Society were representatives of that view. Other photographers embraced all special effects that they could make in the camera or darkroom. They were the picturalists. A photographer named William Mortensen was an outstanding pictorialist of that era, yet few photographers today have any knowledge of Mortensen and his work. William Mortensen opened a studio in Utah, but he had a little problem. Most of his female models lost their clothing when posing for him. This fact facilitated Mortensen's move to Laguna Beach, California. In California, Mortensen opened a studio and a school for photographers. He even wrote a book on pictorialism called A Command to Look. He attracted the attention of early movie producers and was hired to produce screen star photographs. Mortensen's problem cropped up again as many silent screen legends lost their clothes in front of his camera. Mortensen crossed another line and used his pictorial skills to give messages of a spiritual nature in a series of photographs called King of Kings. Mortensen moved on to another controversial photographic topic with a collection of pictorial photographs on witches.
Cecil B. DeMille and other Hollywood icons financed Mortensen's work on witches. William Mortensen moved on to another pictorialist project called American Grotesque, involving photographs and books. William Mortensen was featured in multiple magazines, and exhibits and was a spokesperson for companies like Kodak. But the old dichotomy between purism and pictorialism killed William Mortensen's claim to fame. Ansel Adams said, William Mortensen is the devil incarnate. He wouldn't allow his photos to be in any show with Mortensen. Mortensen is still important. So, um, you know, the question you could, that, it's a question you could really ask about any person who is creative and who has put work that's been disseminated out into society is why do we still come back to them? Why are they important? What is it about their work that um, keeps going on beyond their time? And in Morrison's case, I think um, a small part of it is because he's been so disregarded for the last, um, you know, for, for quite a while. Um, up until probably the 1980s, until Deborah Ermis did the first show at Barnstall Park that traveled to New York and San Francisco. But that was the first um, resurrection of Mortensen. Um, and, oh, and this is a picture of him. It's called The Quest for True, for Pure Form. And this is where he's mocking the, the uh, purest photographers like Ansel Adams and Edward Weston. Um, but he, um, I think we can look at him now with fresh eyes and with uh, the ability to research things so much more easily because of the internet, um, you can, we can understand more about him. We can make more connections about his work. So, I, I mean, personally, I've come up with like 16 things that to me are why he is still really important. Um, and I'm just going to show you a couple of them. So. This, this image is using Meredith, uh, probably from 1926, it's untitled, it's an experiment. Um, okay, so his work has been reviled by everybody um, during this time. Even Deborah Ermis, when she did that show, you'd read the reviews and people were really dissing Mortensen. It was like, why are we looking at this crap? Um, basically, I mean, it was what, what was being said. Um, Photography has has ha always had this ongoing battle since the 19th century of of um, things that are documented, the camera being pointed at people or situations, somebody pushing the button, taking the picture, going in a dark room, doing this mechanical process. The mechanical process of photography made it a disregarded art form up until really the 1960s or 1970s. Um, People did not think of it on the same level as painting or, uh, you know, lithography or any of the other arts. And so um, there's there's that difficulty, and that's why the battle brews between Ansel Adams and and um, and William Mortensen, because what they're trying to do is raise photography up as an art form, and each camp has their own way of doing that. Um, so. The uh, so Mortensen, I think, becomes really important because you can see this is a manipulated version of that last picture. If you look at the floor, the floor is not the floor is still blocked out, the body is stretched. So I have no idea how he actually did this uh, manipulation. Um, and he approached photography like an artist as, instead of a photographer. To him, everything was a game, fair game. And, and he said this, and I'm going to give you a quote, however reprehensible morally, the doctrine that the end justifies the means is certainly true and valid aesthetically. Throughout the choice of technical methods and materials, there is just one fundamental law, fun, fundamental law to be observed. All methods, all materials, all processes are legitimate if the essential emotional and dramatic effect of the product is by their use enhanced. So 
it was natural for him to go in and use his hands to manipulate, to draw, to take away parts of the photograph, to add things that weren't there before. That was just his mentality. But that is why people hated him is because it was went against the pure nature of what they thought photography as a darkroom practice was. So um, because of that, I think Mortensen in his writings and his imagery is the first photographer of the 20th century to consistently over 30 years argue for the manipulation of the photographic image. No one really had done that in the way that he had done that in his books, his writings, and his teachings, and in his photographs. Um, that is what he does. It's an automated voice on a clip channel. No, 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 no. The lecturer. Oh, um, he. I, then his name was on there. He had to be seen in Laguna Beach. That's also what I was asking. Yeah. He had most of the game in Laguna Beach. What I would do, first of all, I think I saw your other video. And I, I like this well, one. The other one had some sound yeah. glitches and the music so, didn't quite fit. The momentum was fantastic. And then all of a sudden it stopped when the speaker stopped. Yeah, yeah. So I would take the speaker and just insert little moments oh, in yeah. throughout the movie yeah we had it, some good things to say but it just for me it just stopped the moment they throw some samples in there yeah or just shorten the guy up because yeah it, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, yeah you're it's right it's just rolled along and then yeah yeah and then it just stops and it's like yeah. what you're saying is uh, like narrating and then there, you see very few clips of him but be, yeah yeah and you have the you have the typo Oh, Do no. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I'm going to be the typo queen today. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? It's, it says, um, Project, Project. 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 Oh. Project is misspelled. I'll look, I'll look up through it. I, it's in the witches section. Okay. Okay. You use CT twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the um, Meredith, the model that you see in several other pictures, was his second wife. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. She was a, and I was not able to verify this for sure, but I got the story on several online sites. She was a U of A student. She was 20 years younger than him. He said she was his muse and the inspiration for all of his work. And so she's in a lot of the pictures. And she's the one who donated all of his work to the University of Arizona. And she also had a crap load, I understand, of, of uh, Ansel Adams stuff. That Morton said had collected, and she donated that also. Uh, so we're in the process of. I, I've asked the people in charge of speaker series to see if they couldn't get the Center for Creative Photography to bring out a collection of his work and give us a lecture, as they say they will. So we're looking at that living up here. Yeah, yeah. Because he he is never going to be accepted. No, in no. Our society. And we have to photograph women without their clothes. Is that it? You think? That's exactly what it is. Hmm. You know, yeah. At the time in Hollywood, he was being hired by Cecil B. DeMille, who was a, about as right-wing as you could get, which really surprises me. But he saw through his yeah. work that this guy was a real artist, so he hired him to do a lot of photography. But, of course, it's never incorporated in any DeMille film. <laughs> um, he... Um... I got this idea. We were talking about where you get the ideas from. One of our club members who passed away, Don Spear, used to do a, a, a lecture once a year on uh, William Mortensen. And Don had been to the Fred Archer School of Photography, which was Mortensen's school right. in Laguna Beach. And so he knew these people firsthand. Some of them. That was kind of interesting. And then he passed away, and I said, oh, I'm going to try to make a little video that just sort of sums up the the same kind of things he would say. But now when I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, you know, he did Van Gogh. Why can't we pick a photographer like, what's her name, Dorothy Lange, you know, the, the 30s Depression era, and just do a show on some of her work. You know, but he's a big deal because when I go out here with the club, even now, people will say to me, 
Oh, that's that's too manipulated. I, I it's you know really yeah yeah. Huh. yeah. We still have that dichotomy in uh, as some of the beginning people they'll say, well, I'd rather have it just the way it came on the camera. Well, okay. in movies of this era, a special effects were readily accepted. Oh but yeah, his word. Yeah. It's, so it's interesting. It's interesting. But I just thought I'd throw, I somehow other fell into, um, what kind of videos can you make? Um, and I ended up in these mini documentaries. I don't know what else to call it. You know, where I'm featuring something like that. I did this one from script in the sense that I figured out what I was going to say about William Morton said, the purist, the pictorialist, ahead of time and made a little chart that I wanted to feature these points. And then I tried to find um, pictures and film clips that fit the points, mm -hmm. you know, to make it. So I did work with a script. I had, I noticed a couple of times, Gene, um, as you were, as the um, a narrator was yes. saying things, you were able to follow on yeah. the screen. And there were a couple of ones that it went to the next That's slide right. before, if right. you're reading it, right. before you finished reading it and the narration. The narration, yeah. yeah. So that was the hardest part of it. The absolutely hardest part of it was to make the narration fit with the text. Um, well, it worked. It worked really well. It's Flowy Long telling the story. And yeah. The picks are great. And then you hit the lecturer who had a lot of good things to say. Yeah. yeah. But he wasn't probably the best no. visual person to be. No. Yeah. I need a few more nudies in there and then that would <laughs> You have to understand this is a science joke, but I'll share it with you guys. At the beginning of at the beginning of showtime, somebody always shows a little history of film, you know. Yeah. So you had the one about the say their name wrong, Luminate Luminate Brothers. Lumiere. Lumiere Brothers. And I kiddingly said after he had showed it, they had filmed the first movie supposedly workers walking out of their factory. I said, You guys missed the whole point of it. There was a third brother. He was in a back room. He paid some chick five francs to jam the pants on the table naked. He filled it. And then he had those Nickelodeons out of the world. He lived down in the Riviera and he kept working. <laughs> so, how did that joke go over, Gene? Yeah. <laughs> 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 was talking about uh, where do you get your ideas and as Gene said you get them from various places and you should never hesitate to steal them from someone else absolutely you know I uh, when I was getting into video I remember one of the first things I got God, I can't remember his name way back in the East Center Frank something or other um, was the first time I'd seen multiple images on the screen yeah. And I said, wow, this is neat. So I spent some time trying to figure out how to do that. You know, so I, I encourage everybody else, steal from everybody else because <laughs> it's there for the taking. Well, you know? creativity is taking somebody's idea a step further. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of times it is. Yeah. And you, you don't have to do it all like G does it or Larry or Phil or Diana. Do your own thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had a lot of trouble. I used the AI voice because I wasn't happy with the way I sounded on a couple of recordings I made. So I sort of listened to Phil. And he said it sounded like I was talking into a tin can or something. You know, it was a, it was a echo. And you were. That was the amazing part. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's his microphone that didn't can for the strings. Yeah, it was attached to the laptop. Oh my god. Anyway, I, I, I would like to play a few minutes of it. But see the Android phone one on the left? Yeah. It was the beginning to a video that I use when I teach the Android phone class. But it sounded tinny. It, the sound was terrible. And the picture wasn't quite in. Focus the way I wanted. Then I got a birthday present, a Pixel phone. And I said, wait a minute. You can plug the uh, lavalier mics, little thing, right into the bottom of the Pixel phone. It automatically recognizes it and takes it over. So then I said, well, let me use a lavalier mic and let me let the phone go on automatic focus. So I put it on the uh, gimbal and let it focus and, and point automatically. 
and the difference is astounding. If you just play a couple minutes of that iPhone, it before we get to that, there is that. Could you take some of the guy's lecture, take the video out, just use his lecture, and have him talking, and or then put your the photographs in? That's what I'm going to do. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what I want to do with it. We got a week or we got a few weeks till showtime. Maybe I can get it done. No, you don't. I'm leaving next week. <laughs> I'm gonna have it all done before, before I you go. Band. Okay, just shoot them. That's next cool. Thursday. So plan on actually having the showtime done before the end of this week. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Well, I ask everyone, a lot of you folks have been really good about giving me stuff because yeah. I put that call out saying, Hey, I, I want to get this done so I don't have to come back from Japan and yeah, you know, figure out what I'm going to do. Plus, the fact that I've got to write something for the newsletter mm -hmm. before April first, and I don't get back till allegedly ten o'clock the thirty first that night. So I got to have all my end of it done beforehand. All right. So you said this next one is yeah. Just, just play a little bit of it. You can see the difference, especially the south. Um, just I'd actually use my voice to somewhere. I'm Gene Kamarmi. I'm the educational chair for the Green Valley Recreation Photography Club. Lately, I have received many requests from club members to offer a class on using an Android phone as a camera. I thought I'd just go to my repository of all knowledge, YouTube, and find a video on using an Android phone as a camera. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm really wrong. Oh, I found some videos, but many were made by people whose native language is not English, and therefore they were very difficult to understand. And most all of the YouTube video creators had no pedagogical skills. With that in mind, I decided to create a video for the photography club. There's one problem. Because Android is open source, camera manufacturers have adapted the phone camera programs to their hardware. That means the camera app on every Android phone is not identical. So we're going to ask you to put a new app on your phone. Open Camera is the name of the app. It will turn your phone into a DSLR and it will allow us to standardize instruction for a quick class. So pause this video now and install Open Camera on your Android phone before you go any further. <laughs> it's not your real voice. It is. I know, but it's not how we hear you in here. Yep. No. Well, this he was demonstrating that lavalier mic going into the Android, right. and it's terrible. Gene, that is just terrible. Play yeah. back on these speakers. It's so bassy. Yeah, heavy on the bass. Oh. See, that's your, that's your voice right there. Yeah. But that's not how you, that is. Well, the microphone had a lot to do with it. Oh. So can that be adjusted or fixed, like well, that yeah, day or something? I'm just curious, curious as to why it's. So I'm bad. getting another mic. You know, I got another mic ordered. We'll try it out. I've been waiting for it to get here. It's 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 delayed in transit. Yeah. Well, yeah, experimental but, microphone. But yeah, in answer to Todd's question, you, you can change that in Audacity. You can yeah, you get absolutely change the frequencies up and down. You can play the bass right out of it. Yeah. Oh, but that was almost. At points, unintelligible yeah. because of the heavy bass. Oh, well, at least yeah. well, that, that, that has nothing to do with the audio. That has to do with the gummies that it was eating. You no, know, I did. Yeah. You guys yeah. always say that. <laughs> well, he only uses those early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> when I want to be creative. <laughs> oh my god! And I got one more up there. Do you want to see my? It's like two seconds long. Who was it last week that was looking for an introduction? Was it you? Well. Uh, Sherry Lee, Sherry. Yeah, she, so she, from the suggestion she got, she's uh, redone it, so we're going to show that also. Yeah. So, yeah. which one is, is it this oh, one? Oh, the old coyote, yeah. That, I decided, you know, if you got a cow, I'd get a coyote. What the hell? Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you.
There you go. Yeah. Well, bless you. I thought that was cute. I don't know. I can make it longer. Oh, no. I, no, I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did get it. I didn't either. I, did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just thought it was a jump. <laughs> Yeah, I make it a little louder. <laughs> it was cute. It's just an idea I'm working on. I want to make him a little, um, maybe a fade in, fade up, play around with a little bit. But the idea is there. I, at first, I was reluctant to do a little intro. And then I see all the ones you guys say, but I see, you know, they're not bad. It's almost like a branding of your video. Yeah. 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 You know? yeah. A branding. All right, so let's look at what Sherry Lee's put together here. So there's several of them on here? There's, well, there's the two that were the favorites. Pause in a moment. Yeah, so I faded them out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did. I had different pieces of music, and I kind of wanted to see what you know, what music you guys uh, liked. And then I changed the first one because uh, that one was favored, but to have the the background on it. So, and then there were two of them that you guys didn't like, so they weren't in there. So there was two versions of number one with different music. And then the um, one for Jean, and then whatever the other one, the number five was one that you guys liked. And I did two versions of that. Let's play it again. Okay. So I hate to say this, but I agree with Jean. <laughs> you like that one? I gotta regret that saying this. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I found one thing. I went to YouTube and I watched a lot of videos on uh, people who had a series, you know, a show that repeated itself, uh, a video podcast kind of thing. And music, they used one song. To introduce everything, and it became almost part of the branding mm -hmm. of the uh, of the video. So the music are really, really important part. I spent hours finding that little god awful clip that kind of fit in there that was jivey enough to sound good and play around with it, you know. And I'm just going to use that as a thematic thing through all of my videos. So when you heard that music, you assume it's a video by me, you know. And yeah. I think that's on a lot of the YouTube people. Yeah, but hey, as soon as the music comes on, you know whose video it is. However, no, so, music is for these. You need to use stingers. In other words, something that has a musical conclusion, not a fade out. And that's what you do. Okay. And the other thing is that you have mixed messages on the screen. Is it I'm loving my life or is it my production? What is it you're trying to say? And I think if you look at all the logos for all the studios, they're trying to say, hey, we're the MGM Lion, we're the Paramount Mountain or whatever, and that's what you need to say. Not, I'm loving, people are going, 
yeah, okay, you're loving your life, and then it's production. Well, what, so, what's the message? So my YouTube hashtag is loving my life. So that's why I have the hashtag loving my life, because that is my, that's what I am on YouTube. That's my hashtag. I know. What are you trying to say in this? You're trying to say, this is my production. So maybe it's loving my life production. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're sending many people, and okay. also on that graphic, people are are looking or Wait a minute. There's a three way there, and there's a sign, and there's and what you're trying to do is use that crested uh, yeah. cactus, yeah. which I love. I, mean, I think it's great. And then the the woman on the I always thought it was a stool, but it's crutches or it's something. Back <laughs> it's a strap. I, I just think there's just so many things going on there that you're we're missing the central theme. And also the music, uh, Gene is absolutely right. Um, you listen to any of these introductions, they're stingers, they're not, let's bring this music up and then fade it down. So it's da da, you know, that's yeah. that kind of thing. So, so that's just my option. So where would where would we find stingers? Oh, all over the place. So was the like the I think it was the third one on there. Um, it just started with a loud sound, and then uh, I didn't. Uh, was that like the closest to a stinger? Out, Probably yeah. out of yeah. what? Yeah, let's play it again. Go ahead. Yeah, in the commercial packages, they made it. No, not that one. Oh, you're going to go. Over. I think it's the third one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. See, and that, it doesn't. And that one is also going to fade out. Yeah. But I'm thinking this one is the closest. Right. Or what? Yeah. Is that? Is that closer? Better. Yeah. 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 Closer. Yeah. That's closer. And that's just my observation. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It's just. Okay. Hmm. I know. I mean, your eye is drawn to that three way and that sign, and that's not what you're trying to do. No. Uh -uh. Could you just use the uh, you could. Uh, cactus, you know, zoom in on that part mm -hmm. and still have the outline and focus on. I mean, you said that you, you're just fascinated by them and you've got yeah. lots of photos of yeah. them. So, could, could that be more of your? Your photo in that. Uh, if I uh, one of them doesn't have the the street in it, I mean it kind of depends or the highway. Well, I'll play with it. I, I definitely appreciate the idea. Look at the wording really carefully. Okay. You've got the uh, symbol and loving my life, and underneath it, I would put with Sherry blah blah blah, um, and then. Um, so that calls, as he said, your attention to your video site. And then um, you can put other information down in the bottom of the screen. But I would definitely do um, the name and the title of the series and your name big and bold and right in face. And then some other information. Or I don't even need any other information. Yeah, I, I could just take take production right. off. I mean, yeah. if I just post do... Calls, Fox. If I just did the, if I just had my my, hash, my hashtag and then my name under it yeah, and yeah. production or nothing like that, just. Well, so you had a YouTube channel? Yeah, my YouTube channel is loving my life. Hashtag loving my life. It's one. Channel in there. See, I would do uh, loving my life. Maybe production up on top, and then Sherry Lee with Sherry Lee, which on the bottom. Okay. Sherry, are you going back to look at that cactus sometime this spring? My uh, son-in-law did those photos for me. It's not where I can get to it. So he has a drone and he did it on the drone. It's hard to get. That one's yeah. hard to get to. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking, uh, you know, if you went back at uh, sunrise, sunset, get good, do a time lapse of it. Full screen. Uh, that's an awesome idea. I don't think that's realistic for me at this point in my life with yeah. wanting to get this incorporated into It'd my upcoming motion video. Without, motion without the jerkiness of the clip. Uh -huh. but, hmm. 
Okay. And if this is going on with your YouTube, you know, uh, you need that mandatory subscribe and what button it's at the introduction of every got up a YouTube video. I know. There are little packages in some of the editors that literally just put those in because it's so popular. Yeah. I have I mean I have a a, a barcode. Yeah. But yeah. I wasn't gonna put it in no, I, video. If it's online though, you almost have to. Once you get to YouTube, you've got yeah, to have yeah. that. I I do I have it on my business cards. I'm curious to know what you, what you think about the the black figure. I kind of like it. Yeah. You don't like it. I love it. I love it. Uh, that's get... not changing because I really like it and it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> I, like it. I won't, so, I won't tell you what it was, like but it, it, I like it. I think it when it gets really big. That what version of it gets. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. 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 But uh, you know, so, let the shit until next year. You'll have more ideas. Yeah, I'm not going to. This is going to get wrapped up pretty soon. <laughs> but thank you. Didn't you last week? Didn't you say you have a, a bunch of Crested Suarez photographs? I do, but that they were before I had my Pixel, and they're not very good quality. Um, but I do have a bunch. But um, but I happen to really like that picture. Mm -hmm. And it's from my son-in-law. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I'm taking a grant with a grain of salt. Your suggestions, <laughs> and there's some things that I'm gonna see what I can, you know. Like we say, it's all what you should hear. That's what you can. You know, it's all when but, the individual wants himself. Uh, and all these ideas and yeah. everything. The other thing would be, uh, I mean, I know Diane here, maybe some other people. Uh, talk to us about Pixabay and everything. There's photos on there too. That's where I got my backpack gal. My silhouette yeah. was on Pixabay. Um, the I, but I think my real takeaway is the getting the two messages because I was really not sure how to work with that because I definitely wanted the loving my life. So and then and then putting in productions and I'm like I really don't even like the word productions. Um, and so if I could just have just the loving my life and my name under it, then I'm good with that. If that for YouTube, it's, it's you know, it works reasonable, yeah. Well, YouTube's different, you got to go look at, at, at a lot of them. What you would normally do in a video is not necessarily what the YouTubers do, and you kind of have to play around with that a little bit and see. I'm surprised with some of the YouTube stuff. We made an instructional video here about three years ago on how to make a foam core mount for your photograph. More than three. Is it one three? More than three. Time flies. A while back. A while back, we made this this video. And we had a lady who was going to do it. In the morning, we got all the equipment set up. She told us she was sick. So they had me do it, and I was bashful. And um, uh, Brian Lavender would, was. What'd you say? You were what? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 that's an impossibility. I screwed up the dialogue multiple times. Let me rephrase that. If I'm the guy in teleprompter, that's how bad it was. I'm <laughs> Scott. So, um, yeah, we, I, you did a good job with the teleprompter. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine once I got teleprompter yeah. going. I put it on, it's on the club's website, but I put it on my YouTube channel and I picked. Keywords very judiciously, and now when my grandkids talk about YouTube, I say, "Yeah, but do you have seventy-five thousand hits? Because that <laughs> thing has seventy-five thousand oh, hits on YouTube." Gene, wow. Gene, wow, it's your hair. Mars for us. I'm getting a haircut on Wednesday. Oh, oh no, that's so good. That's right. But I, I think YouTube is a different animal completely. And you got to play with that and, and see what people like and don't like and all that kind of no, thing. But you see what you like. Yeah. See what you want. Yeah. 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 These are personal things. Yeah. You're right about YouTube being different. I heard from a grandson that I haven't heard from in a long, long time, ever. And uh, he said, hey, I saw your Van Gogh video. It popped up as I was going through. <laughs> I said, Wow. <laughs> so did he watch it? Because I took, yeah, I, I took Gene's advice and put a new one in. Maybe that's why it popped up. You know, he was saying how they, they compressed them and the transitions and what they were showing now were 
what really it occurred. popped up on mine too. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could do a whole, you know, you could do a whole class on YouTube. I mean, it's just that's an animal in and of itself. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just use it as another storage place. It's the most viewed channel on earth. Yeah. Is it? Um, yep. Geez. Number no. one. Where I mean, anything you want to. Anything you want to know how to do or something, you yeah. go on there and type it yes. in. And it's it. With, with yeah. my upcoming trip to Japan, I sat down with Sandy and he talked to me about the certain SIM card that you can put on your iPhones. It doesn't work on Androids. Mm -hmm. Though, when I typed in SIM card to Android, there was some videos that popped up that said you can load one. So I don't I have to do more research on that, but I have the iPhone. But uh, it just, um, you know, there were a half dozen different, you know, versions of how to load the eSIM e card onto your iPhone. And that way, when you're traveling like that, you're not using your, like, Verizon mm -hmm. charges 10 bucks a day when you're overseas. Uh, mm -hmm. But with the SIM card, you can, uh, Sandy showed me the one that he used and everything, and you buy it by the number of days, so like one week, two weeks, a month or so, and, and the amount of data that you want, and whichever you use first, but then you're not paying the uh, premium that the, your regular carrier is going to charge you. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to, to talk about is something I experienced actually Thursday, last week after the, um, the volunteers luncheon, and um, Danny, our club president, is doing a presentation of his walk on the Santiago right. um, the trail, the trail, and everything. So um, uh, Kevin had this whole room set up with a ton of equipment to for Danny to do his um, on-screen video and and his audio. And so yeah, Kevin asked me to give him a hand with that. There, I did, and actually. And what I ended up doing was, so here was the camera, and then I was sitting off screen, and Danny was facing me. Now, I didn't have any um, vocal part in this at all. I was sitting there. But what, what we experienced, and Kevin knew this already, which is why he wanted me to help, by me sitting across from Danny and listening to his story and him telling the story, I was I was relating to the story and and having visual emotions based on the story, which then he responded to visually. I mean, it's just like subconsciously and everything that you know when he saw me go like oh wow or something like that. You know, he it changed his expressions and everything, and it made it uh, made more real. It made more real as opposed to and that's what Kevin said. He said. He was because he's paying attention to all his equipment and everything. He said, "You always need to have another person sitting there to to help just get that person be more natural and express themselves." So, if you're ever doing any interviews or things like that, and something, uh, if you have someone else that can be that person to sit there and listen to the story, Danny's story, it's it's fascinating, and it will be shown at the uh, at the annual dinner that we're having in April here. So, but uh, it was just an interesting. Um, I yeah. know that, and he had never experienced that. But going back into Kevin sent this morning, he sent me like just the the first four minutes of the video and everything to get my opinion on it. And, um, just seeing Danny and he called it an interactive monologue. Well, I wasn't yeah. talking at all. But e emotional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. To your point here, an audience, I think that's important. The person speaking that has a visual clue to an audience. Yeah. And when I'm speaking, and I, I feed off the audience. Mm -hmm. So I think when people are doing an interview, it's the same kind of thing. Um, it's yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So. I, I I think that's one of the hardest things to do is the interview. You know. And of course, like you said, he set up all the equipment. Um, this summer, I was doing a really short. I was helping one of my granddaughters. I'll be phrase that doing a really short video for a local animal rescue shelter. It's just going to be a couple minutes long blurb. And she got 
film my Canon D camera and I'm gonna film my this. And she moved the camera until she was almost on top of the lady she was doing the interview with. I mean, she was like this far away, wide angle. And I said to her, so why are you doing that? She said, I don't have to mess with microphones or anything else. If I get in that close, it just sounds the Canon camera. It just sounds good. And then she did the same thing. She had another person sitting that the speaker actually talked to. Right. And I think that's that's critical. Yeah. Yeah. I just I never it. thought about that just now. You know, it just uh, it brought out the emotion in Danny too. Yeah. So when you actually see him speaking on screen and everything, there's there's emotion as opposed to just because he was reading a script. Um, and so it just brought out the emotion. So just I thought it was interesting. And yeah. it made, you know, like you say, other ideas and different things. So uh, Danny didn't have any notes. It was all no, no, he had notes. Okay. He was he was he was reading off the script. But now, and, and Kevin's gonna do kind of like we were talking about with Gene and everything. There'll be you'll hear Danny's voice talking and everything, but there'll be different photographs and occasionally It'll come up, uh, you know, where Danny's just talking, and it was one of the things that you know, we were saying to him is, you know, just you experience this, just talk about your experience, just you know, just recall it for us and everything. And when he did that, I thought that was the best video that we were getting because he wasn't sitting there every now and then glancing down, you know, at the script. So. Yeah, I think that's very true. With people who aren't professionals, professionals don't need it. They're so used to sitting in front of a camera that, but for, that's a really good point for somebody who's not a professional yeah. narrator to have somebody feeding back to them. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's all, all of us, except for you guys. What's that? I said, that's all of us, not professionals other than you. Where? With some <laughs> Well, back in your ancient years. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that when Morrison was from. Oh, right. okay. We were doing radio in Detroit. I needed a really good voice. And one of my students said, Well, you know, there's a minister down the street that sounds really good. So I went to him and I said, Hey, how about you like to make so many dollars an hour? And he said, Oh, it's not really a great idea. I can't maybe come in and do narrations. And the guy sounded really good on, on narration. And I think, but they're, you know, these guys are professionals. Yeah. I mean, he didn't need a script. He just gave me the idea and he roared. <laughs> and I have used a teleprompter recently. If you go on to uh, like um, Amazon Kindle or your iPad, there are, I use Parrot, you know, the application. And you can do a nice teleprompter. And then I just set it on a uh, tripod stand up high enough. Or doesn't look I'm reading it off the table. And it, it works really well for me because I have a tendency to ramble off the topic. <laughs> what? <laughs> Grace, Grace showed us what a year ago. <clears throat> oh, did you? Yeah, she had a teleprompter on her eye portal. <laughs> well, thank you all. Thanks. Appreciate it. Anything else? No. Thanks, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.